Hey fellas, I haven't done any sorting yet today. I may not even end up getting to it. It's just a lazy day, I guess. I may have been needing to take a day off from this for a while, though, I guess. You know, it gets boring day in, day out doing this. Tire someone, might even say. So, um, rather than sorting some fresh stuff, I'll just talk about the cards I'd set aside yesterday to talk about. How's that sound, guys? So, in a particular order, uh, we got uh, Spirit of the Night. Uh, I think I talked about this guy before. He's a 6 5 flying trample pro black haste first strike when attacking for 6 and triple black. Uh, the casting cost is really high, but um, oh, look at that Herborg Panther sitting on top. Um, Herborg Panther has the ability to pay bat black and you sacrifice himself. That you, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at his other ability. <laughs> Brain fart. Uh, Urborg Panther says on him that you can sacrifice himself, Breath Stealer, and Feral Shadow to search your library for Spear of the Night and put into play as though we were just uh, put directly into battle. I can speak English, I really can. Search your deck form, put him directly into the battlefield. Shazam. So, um, yeah, Spear of the Night is one of the earliest creatures that basically had a, a set thing dealing with him. You see that every now and again doesn't pop up too often in Magic, but it does happen. Uh, you'll see it with the various Cauldra artifacts spread throughout the original Mirrodin block. The Sword of Cauldra, the Helm of Cauldra, the Shield of Cauldra. Um, what other foolish do you have with sets? Um, I'm drawing a blank. I really am. Oh well. Not that it matters, but yeah, it does happen periodically. Uh, we've got Buried Alive. Um, from Weatherlight, uh, the Weatherlight set, um, tried to make a lot of using your graveyard as a resource, which for, traditionally was a black thing, but, oh, well, no problems. Uh, two calls in a black to search your deck for up to three creatures, put them to your graveyard, shuffle. Uh, Buried Alive did end up getting used in a lot of, uh, combos. So basically, you search your deck for three guy for three guys that you might want to, uh, reanimate and then reanimate them. Crazy, huh? Um, quite frequently, you'd see people just first turn, Swamp, Dark Ritual, Buried Alive, pull three really good creatures out of the deck, throw them in the graveyard, so they go. Or even three not all that good creatures. Just throw a pair of, um, <coughs> pair of Nether Shadows and something huge in the graveyard, say so go. Next turn, play a Swamp, animate dead on the huge guy, and during your upkeep, the two Nether, like, the Nether Shadows, or at least one of the Nether Shadows would come back. I don't know. It's alright. Kid science fun stuff. You had the uh, series of charms. You had a cycle of charms both in uh, Mirage and in Visions. It's a low casting cost ca instant card that had three different effects. You choose one of them. Um, charm cards have come back several times over the years. Like I said, you had them in Mirage and Visions. Um, you had three color tra charms in Invasion block. Um, you had the various shard charms in Alara block. Um, you had two shards somewhere, uh, two shards, you had two uh, charms um, hiding out in Time Spiral block. One of them was Time Shifted and another one was a Chaos Shifted one. So yeah, you had some interesting stuff. Uh, the Flash mechanic uh, first came in in Mirage with the card, uh, I believe it was Mirage. Was it Mirage that had Flash? Or another set that had the card Flash? I can't remember. And look, there's Vision Charm. Um, I used to play with the charms. Um, unfortunately, they rarely terrific. I mean, they had a lot of interesting uses, but... Not here. I used to use Sapphire Charm a lot. Uh, I would make... I could... I'd use it to make my opponent's creature phase out when he attacked me with it. It's like, oh, you swing with that? It's phased out. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, you had the card Flash. Uh, plus, I believe this is the first creature with the Flash mechanic. Though it wasn't called Flash at the time, the Banalish Knight. He's a 2 2 first striker with Flash for two cults and a white. Kid sounds fun stuff. Um, 
honestly, I like creatures with flash, though I think a lot of them do end up being kind of severely overcosted. But maybe that's just more of my opinion, I don't know. But yeah, creatures with flash are really nice because they let you just pull stuff out of nowhere. Um, just as an example, this past weekend, the uh, I can't even remember what it's called off the top of my head, the 3 3 flyer for uh, Four Colors and a Blue that has flash. Um, I used that thing a couple of times to just throw a blocker onto the field when my opponent wasn't expecting it. It was awesome. Uh, I couldn't do Griffin. They went nuts with Griffins in Mirage Block. Uh, Griffins has been an off and on presence since then in the game. Um, unfortunately, there have only been like three cards uh, printed that um, really encourage you to play Griffins. Um, there's the, I want to say Matenda Griffin, I'm not certain, um, which was a 2-2 two -two flyer that you could sacrifice it to return a Griffin in your graveyard to your hand, if I'm recalling the card correctly. Um, I knew there was a Griffin that did that. Uh, I believe the Tarenko was the one with banding that you couldn't do, had first strike. All sorts of fun, happy stuff. There was a Zaberi Golden Feather, um, pretty much your, the only... Uh, Lord creature printed for Griffins. Um, unfortunately, he was legendary, so you could only have one on the board. Yeah, it's nice, but I don't know. But um, uh, I don't know. I like the Griffin tribe. I just don't think enough's been done. Oh, there was also the card Griffin Canyon. But um, yeah, I don't think there were enough. There's been enough cards printed that capitalize on the Griffin tribal. Maybe that's just my opinion. Doomsday. Triple black sorcery. Pay half your life. Round it up. Uh, put your graveyard on top of your library. Then remove all but five cards in your library from the game. Put the rest on top in any order. Um, once again, one of those cards that dealt with playing around with your graveyard. I've always wanted to do something with Doomsday to exploit it. And I'm thinking maybe I can put it in... Um, I'm trying to think maybe I can uh, do something with the uh, Zeniths to uh, exploit that little SOB. Be nice. It's like, yeah, um, okay, I got a bunch of mana on the, f I got a bunch of land on the field, blah, 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 blah. I doomsday my deck is now three red sun zeniths. No, actually, it's five cards. But yeah, but my deck is now like some red sun zeniths and one or two other filler cards. I don't care. <laughs> Hello. Every turn, zenith, go. Zenith, go. Hey, I'm seeing a thing you again. Kid science fun stuff. Abeyance, I'm pretty sure I uh, mentioned this card before. Um, it's a card that actually caused uh, rules to be changed because it prevents people from paying activation costs. Some genius realized that tapping is an activation cost and lands tap have to tap to produce mana. Um, this caused um, rules to be uh, rewritten a little bit because that was really stupid powerful because it turned uh, abeyance basically into a dumbed down type walk. Not even that badly dumbed down either. Uh, Phyraxian Tribute from Mirage. Two Cults of the Black. Sack two creatures. Destroy target artifact. It's a sorcery. Um, fun thing about this is one of the very very few black cards ever printed that can handle in uh, artifacts. Black is traditionally very, very weak at dealing with artifacts. Um, in fact, for the longest time, Black's big insurance policy against artifacts was the Veneral's Disc. Go fig. Um, Forbidden Crypt. Forbidden Crypt is another card that I always wanted to do something with. It's uh, three colors and a uh, double black. Whenever you draw a card, you instead take a card from your graveyard and put it into your hand. Uh, if a card goes to your graveyard, from it. for each card you withdraw, you instead choose a card to your graveyard, put it in your hand, you cannot lose the game. When a card goes to your graveyard, goes into your graveyard, remove that card from the game. Okay, so basically what it says is whenever something enters your graveyard, exile it. Um, you, whenever you draw a card, take a card from your graveyard, put it in your hand. Um, if, you, if there are no cards in your graveyard, when you attempt to draw a card like this, you lose. Uh, Forbidden Crypt is a fun little card. I always wanted to find a way to, like, partner it with Donate and Tormod's Crypt. Yeah! Just to be mean, you know? It's just like, 
Bam! I play Forbidden Crypt. I donate to you. Tormod's Crypt. Tack it, tap and sacrifice Tormod's Crypt. Remove your grave the contents of your graveyard from the game. Go! You lose during your draw step. Kid Science fun stuff. Skulking Ghosts. Um, I believe is the first appearance of what we can informally call the skulking mechanic. Uh, it's a color in a black for a 2-1 flyer. If he becomes the target of a spell or, or effect, you sacrifice him. At least I think sacrificing is the current uh, wor wording on him. Um, it's interesting. It's an interesting little drawback. Uh, mostly you'll see that on under-costed stuff. I've seen it on things like 3-3 three, three ground pounders for 2, 2-1 two, flyer for 2. You'll see it on like 3-3 three, three flyers for 3. Um, there's a... I want to say it's a 3-3 three, three flanker with that ability, with that drawback as well, in, uh... somewhere in Time Spiral Block, that block, they call it Skulking Night. Kid Science, fun stuff. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of interesting things going on in Mirage that would be built on in later years. Uh, Necrotal from Visions. He's a 2-1 first striker for two colors and double black, which doesn't seem all that powerful. But when he comes into play, you destroy without possibility of regeneration, target non-artifact, non-black creature. So basically, he's a uh, terror with a 2-1 first striking body. Um, for the most part, I tend to lump uh, control magic effects in with Necrotal type effects, because in the end it achieves the same thing. You get rid of one of your opponent's creatures and get one yourself. So, you know... It works. It works. Kid science fun stuff. Um, granted, of course, with the uh, control magic effects, your opponent has a chance to get his creature back if he's got any kind of enchantment removal. But um, on the reverse side of the coin, with control magic effects, you're often getting something a hell of a lot better than a 2 1 first striker. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Catacomb Dragon, he's a 4-4 flyer, whenever he becomes blocked by a non-artifact, non-black creature, that creature's power is halved, round it up, till end of turn. Uh, one thing Mirage had going is that there was a dragon in every color. At least one. In Mirage. Uh, the green version was Canopy Dragon, he was a 4-4 that you could, uh, give flying to if you, like, paid some mana, if I recall correctly. Um... The blue dragon you could uh, give him or remove from him flying pretty much on a whim, and you could pay a bunch of mana and have him phase out. Which is interesting stuff right there. I believe that was the mist dragon. I can't remember what the white dragon was. Um, the red dragon was well, probably the hell the crimson hellkite. I want to say. I don't remember. Um. Oh, well. Interesting stuff there. Here's a card. Uh, Teferi's Veil. Well, yeah, here's a card. Holy crap. Who would have guessed? Oh my god, I've got cards! Anyways. Um. Alright, now that I'm done laughing at myself. Teferi's Veil. Well, colors in blue. Enchantment. Uh, whenever a creature you control tags, it phases out at end of combat. That's an interesting thing. I tried to build a deck around that. Didn't work too well. Uh, pretty much I'd use that with, um... Cards like the various, uh, Vyashino, um, that, um, I'm bringing fart in here, that would, uh, bounce themselves back to your hand at the end of turn, uh, the most famous one was a 4-2, um, they were actually in Mirage Block, uh, I used to use it, try to use it with Ball Lightning, um, Varchal, I'll say Varchal's Crusader. It's a 3-2 um, Knight from Alliances. And um, if you can uh, activate an ability that uh, makes you sacrifice it at end of turn, but until end of turn it can only be blocked by walls. And almost nobody plays walls. Um, so, yeah. It, it was interesting stuff. Um, I don't even know if that would, combo would still work today. Because the way it works right now is phased out creatures don't actually leave play anymore. They stay on the field. So I don't know what's going on. If that would still work. I'll have to post a question on that. Chronotog! Ain't he pretty? The blue Atog. Um, 
the original Atog was rad. He was in uh, Antiquities. He'd sacrifice artifacts to make him big. Um, then in Mirage, you had the Foratog. That's the second Atog we ever printed. Um, you'd sacrifice forests. The Chronotog, called Sun Blue for a 1 2. Um, he gets plus 3, plus 3. The, other, the earlier Atogs only get plus 2, plus 2. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Unfortunately, the Chronotog makes you skip a turn to do this. And you can only use the ability once a turn. So you can't, for example, like, skip your next 15 turns to make him ungodly huge. <coughs> um, best use there ever was for Chronotog was in old school stasis decks. Um, basically what would happen is you'd just have the Chronotog out, you'd play stasis, give your opponent the, the go, before the end of his turn, you'd pump the Chronotog. You'd skip your turn. That would, your opponent would end turn. Your turn gets skipped. Your opponent takes another turn. The idea being is you're never paying the upkeep on stasis. Kid science, fun stuff. Um, Chronotog would frequently have been was frequently used in uh, especially turbo stasis decks. That is stasis decks running like multiple howling mines. Because um, pretty much the idea being is that. I drop, you know, stasis, some howling mines, chronotog, and it functioned almost like a mill deck. Almost. Um, Man of War. Uh, two calls in the blue for a two-two, and comes into play. Return target creature to owner's hand. Man of War was an interesting little card. Uh, he had a lot of, uh, got used a lot. Uh, very versatile little card. He uh, especially ended up getting uh, used quite nastily in uh, Alloran decks. Um, Alloran's this really high cost green enchantment that lets anyone play creatures of converted mana cost three or less as though they had flash and for free. Oh, oh, that's just mean. So what happened was people were just like, oh, you played something? Cool. Man of War, put it back in your hand. You know, all sorts of crazy things happen, especially if they do that for like making you pitch them or whatever. Um, Vidalian Illusionist, this is a guy I used to use a fair amount back in the day. Uh, two Colts and a Blue for 2 2, Merfolk. Uh, double blue and tap target creature phases out. Um, that would be used. Pretty much defensively, I used it a lot. Um, my opponent would swing at me, your creature phases out, I don't take any damage. Hi. Um, you go to kill my creature, he phases out. You can't hit him now. So, um, yeah. Fun stuff there. Uh, Dreamfighter, also um, quite possibly one of the good creatures with a phasing ability. He's a 1-1. One, one. For two colors and a blue, whenever he blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, um, the Dream Fighter and that creature phase out. So, that's fun stuff. Um, Dream Fighter is one of those cards that you would gladly, that, you know, he rocks on defense. On the offense, he's really fun if you're playing blue green, you just throw a lure effect on him. Yeah, everything available to block him must do so. Here he comes. They all phase out. Yeah. Yeah, that's some mean stuff right there. Uh, we also had the cycle of guild mages. Um, they were all 1-1 creatures with... A, uh, two different tap abilities requiring mana of allied colors to do their stuff. Um, the guild mage concept, of course, would be... Uh, revisited in Invasion Block as the apprentices. Um, you'd also see the uh, concept coming back at least a little bit for a Lara block. For example, you got the uh, the Nea wizard thingy that has a white ability and a red ability. Um, well, I can't remember its name. I didn't get a lot of Alara to begin with, so hey. Oh, oh. So, uh, what else we got here? Uh, making a reappearance for the, f or for the most part, making a uh, appearance in a expansion for the first time. 
Saints, Arabian Knights, you have Jinns and Afrites. Yes. Um, here we have the Shimmering Afrit from Visions. He's a 2-2 two -two for two calls and a blue with flying and phasing. Uh, when he phases in, target creature phases out. It's kind of interesting. The Vaporous Jinn for two calls and double blue. He's a 3-4 flying. And during your upkeep, you pay double blue or it phases out. So you look at some really interesting cards there. Um, <clears throat> that's another thing, too, is the Mirage was set on, I believe, the continent of uh, Jumara. And um, it had a very Middle Eastern feel to it overall. Um old school Middle Eastern, you know, like viziers and caliphs and stuff like that. So yeah, there's some interesting, you know, genies and freaks and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. But um yeah, I mean you had in some interesting stuff going on. Interesting stuff. Um What else do we have going on here? Um, we had uh, gold cards making a comeback again. Um, for example, we had Reparations, which uh, frequently is mentioned in funniest flavor text uh, discussions. It's Carlos in a way in the blue for enchantment. Whenever a target opponent successfully casts a spell that targets you or creature you control, you may draw a card. And um, the illustration, we have this... Uh, burning village in the background and uh, you have this uh, couple standing in front of this uh, fellow who's offering them what looks like a chest full of money and uh, flavor text is uh, sorry I burned down your village here's some gold yeah and here's another one the first time we had this enemy color gold cards for instance we have here the Frenetic of free. He's a colorless and a blue and a red. This is the first time, uh, at least to the best of my knowledge, that you had a two-color card that involved cards of opposing colors. Um, there were previously at least one or two cards that had opponent color activated abilities. For example, the Electric Eel. But at any rate, um, which I believe was from the Dark... Maybe Legends? I don't remember. Anyways, um, the Frenetic of Free is a 2-1 flyer, and he's got this lovely zero-cost activated ability. You flip a coin. Your opponent calls heads or tails while it's in the air. If the flip ends in your favor, it phases out, otherwise you bury it. Uh, Frenetic of Free was really popular back in the day. Um, you'd play it, people would start swinging with it because it, it's flying, it's hard to block, blah 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 blah. Whenever your opponent tried to like drop direct damage or remove or some kind of removal card on it, you activate its ability. If they tried to use a second removal card on it in response, you activate the ability again. And at that point, you've basically got a 50/50 shot of getting to keep your 2-1 flyer. So it's pretty efficient. Here we have a card that has actually won me a few games. Reflect damage. Uh, once again, it's uh, one of those enemy color uh, gold cards. Uh, it's uh, three colors and a white and a red, or red and a white. Take your pick. Instant, redirect all damage dealt by any one source to that source's controller. Um, it's a fun card. I like this card. I've played it off and on for years. Um, for those of you who like the Boros, yeah, look at that. It's Boros colors. Um, my most memory, memorable victory with this card, I think I've mentioned this in the, before, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Um, I'm, at, I'm playing red-white, I'm drawing horribly, I'm at the point where I've got five land on the board, and I've got the ability to cast the reflect damage. I've got nothing in my hand that's going to help me, I'm at four life, my opponent is playing mono-red, he's hammered the hell out of me. Um, he's still at 20 life, and he's got four... 1-1 one, one green snake tokens on the board that he got from a snake basket. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, okay, well, I can buy myself one more turn. Still probably going to lose. And I'm like, eh, whatever. 
go. So he takes his turn, untaps his land, draws his card, and then attacks me with three snake tokens. But this confused me. I'm sitting there like, um... Uh... And I look at the reflect damage, I'm like, you know what, it'll save me one point of damage if there's no damn point. So I say, okay, fine, I take the hit, I go down to one. Then during his second main phase, he plays Inferno. Uh, six damage to all creatures and players. I reflected damage. So he took six for me, and six for each of his four token dudes. And six for himself. So he took uh, 36 damage, he went from 20 to negative 16 Ah, uh, I love that story. It's a great story. Loads of fun. So, anyway, it's Memorial Day. It's a little past six in the evening. Uh, I want to get this posted up, and then I think I'm going to wander out, grab something to eat. Maybe I'll catch a movie tonight. I don't know. Um, you know, it being Memorial Day, you know, uh, you know, as a veteran myself, and you know, with veterans in my family. And, uh, having some bit of family hi uh, history in my family of military service, I'd, uh, I'd just like to say, you know, take some time today to, uh, remember the, vet the fallen, remember the vets. We're out there. We're in the places you just wouldn't expect us to be. And, uh,. Yeah. I'm sorry, I get a little bit weird when I talk about that kind of stuff, because... Heavens forbid, I remember one day when I was in Iraq, just thinking about stuff, and I remember the day when I realized that I was technically a war veteran. And I'm like, who, me? No. Really? Me? Yeah. It's, it, it's one of those really crazy things that I, I actually felt kind of overwhelmed when I realized it. Thankfully, though, Memorial Day isn't for me yet, because I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hot in here, too. It's been hot the last several days. Also been pretty humid. A lot of rain. It hasn't cooled things off much. I think I'm going to put the AC in tonight. Oh, well. Hey, Ghana. Say hello to your fans. Can you say meow? 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 Okay, fine, you just sit there. She's a good cat most of the time. Most of the time. Really lazy, though. Oh, have a good night, fellas. Be safe, be good, etc., etc.